let's make history. Most of Queens remained undeveloped until the 19th century. On the eastern side of the town of Jamaica, there was a network of farms owned and ran by four families, the Remsons, the Everett's, the Ludlums, and the Hendricksons. In 1814, the village of Jamaica, which was part of the town of Jamaica, the village of Jamaica was incorporated, making it the first one on Long Island to obtain that status. St. Albans was named after a city in Hertfordshire, England. Francis Lewis Boulevard, the eastern boundary of St. Albans, was named after a signer of the Declaration of Independence who was from Queens. It began its existence as an exclusive neighborhood, a Yankee slugger, during that period, Babe Ruth would call St. Albans his, his quote unquote stomping grounds. He didn't live there, but he hung, he hung out there a lot. St. Albans had its own golf course. Then in the roaring 20s, there was a housing boom and that all came to a screeching halt when the long dark wings of the Great Depression umbrellaed the nation. The federal government acquired St. Albans in the 1940s and built a naval hospital. Today, it's pretty much a veterans hospital. And a portion of that site where the hospital was became part of the area which would become Roy Wilkins Park. It didn't take long though for St. Albans to reclaim its affinity towards uh, the upscale there's a subsection of St. Albans known as Addislake Park, which is uh, historic for being able to boast such residents as Miles Davis, Duke Ellington, Lena Horne, and others. St. Albans is a middle-class black neighborhood, and you have more and more middle-class black families from the Caribbean moving in lately, just like many of the other uh, neighborhoods in that area. If you enjoyed this video, there are many more. And if you would like to show your support and send a tip or donation, you can do so through Cash App.